Today is Thursday, August 5th, and this is Tokyo Daily, the Olympic show from the Toronto Star. I'm your host, Brendan Dunlop, and what a show we've got for you today. This is a medal-winning show on a medal-winning day. I'll speak with a couple of medal-winning swimmers in a second, but let's start with Canada's latest gold medal at Tokyo 2020. Damian Warner won the decathlon Thursday morning, Canada's fifth gold medal in Tokyo, which is one more gold than Canada took home from Rio and Canada's best gold haul since Barcelona in 1992, if you're clocking the numbers. What a way to do it, Damian Warner. He's the first Canadian to win decathlon at the Olympics and the first decathlete to win it at the Olympics by amassing more than 9,000 points. Let me put that into perspective. No Canadian and only three decathletes ever have broken the 9,000 point barrier in the decathlon. Warner set Olympic decathlon records in the long jump and the 110 meter hurdles, and he tied his own decathlon world record mark in the 100 meters. He ran 10-10. He would have nearly qualified for the final in the men's 100 meter. He also set personal best in the pole vault. The 31 year old from London, Ontario was incredible. Put himself right in the conversation for flag bearer at these games for the closing ceremony and the Lou Marsh award conversation too. Shout out to Canadian Pierce Lepage. He competed in his first Olympics. He finished fifth in the end of the decathlon after riding in the third seat for a little while. But Damian Warner, congrats to you, my man. 14 hours after his gold medal run in the men's 200 meter sprint, Andre de Grasse anchored Canada's four by 100 meter relay team and single-handedly ensured that Canada would compete for a medal in Friday's relay final. Canada was fifth, fifth when de Grasse took the baton from Brendan Rodney. Aaron Brown, who finished sixth in Tuesday's 200 meter sprint, he led off. Jerome Blake ran second in the relay for Canada. The relay final runs Friday night, so you want to watch that. DeGrasse has never missed the podium at the Olympics. Team USA missed the final. They botched the handoff in the second leg, adding to a disastrous Olympics for Trayvon Bromel, who was supposed to be the man. He arrived in Tokyo as the world's fastest man. In the pool, Megan Benfito couldn't overcome a low-scoring first dive to qualify for the 10-meter platform diving final. 12 of the 18 divers in the semi qualify for the final, and Benfeito finished 13th in a heartbreaking exit after she won bronze in Rio. Australia had medal hopes in men's basketball. Problem was, Team USA remembered who they were. And just like against the Czechs, USA toyed with their opponents. They let Australia think that they were in it, and then the Americans shot the lights out. The Aussies had a 15-point lead in the second quarter. Then the Americans woke up, led by Kevin Durant. He dropped 23 points, and he was huge on the defensive end for Team USA. Fresh off an NBA title, Drew Holiday, his defense was amazing. He held Australia's Patty Mills to 5 of 14 shooting, which helped Team USA to swing the game by 34 points. The Americans were down 15 points, then went up by 19. There was also a 48 to 14 run at one point that the Americans very much themselves. Looked like we'd see a USA-Slovenia gold medal game. But Nicolas Batum's game-saving block secured a 90-89 win for France, denying Luka Doncic a chance at gold. But he'll be back. The French beat the Americans once already in Tokyo. Can they do it again in the gold medal game? We'll have to wait and see. Friday night, 10.30, that game goes. The USA looking for their fourth straight gold medal. Speaking of four Olympic medals, fresh off winning a silver in the 4x100m women's free and a bronze in the 4x100m medley, Kyla Sanchez and Taylor Ruck join the show. Very happy to be joined by Olympic medalist Kyla Sanchez. Kyla, welcome back to Canada. Thank you. I'm happy to be home. Well, how did it feel to uh, check off something to declare at customs? You got two Olympic medals. <laughs> I actually didn't declare them, but uh, <laughs> old stories where the beeper goes off because the metal is so dense from the medals, but I, I didn't have that problem. Uh, what a whirlwind it was for you to get to Tokyo. What a whirlwind it must have been in Tokyo. Has it sunk in yet, what you were able to accomplish and all the hard work that you put in? I think uh, as I'm home, it's slowly. And all the media today has definitely made it sink in a little more. I've definitely been feeling the love and the support. What's the question that you get asked most? Is it your relationship with the, with the, the women on the team? Is it uh, what training was like? Um, yeah, more so about the relationship. Today, a lot of questions about how I'm feeling in terms of tiredness. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> well, you've had I had maybe a couple of days. Has the tiredness and, and the fatigue worn, worn off a little bit? Yeah, lots of sleep, just kind of relaxing after all that intensity from the games. Mm -hmm. 
Well, tell me a little bit about the intensity of training. Obviously, not ideal circumstances, particularly in Ontario. I know it's something that you've spoken about a lot and been asked about a lot, but what was it actually like to train just to get to Tokyo in the first place? Yeah, we were lucky to have the pools open um, around June of 2020, and I moved to an apartment literally across from the Toronto Pan Am Sports Centre. So a lot of my life for the past year and a half was pool home, pool home, pool home. Dark Canadian winter, had my girls with me and some of the guys in the group to keep me motivated and excited to train. I have a really good coach and good support system, Ben Sitley, Ryan Millette. I had a lot of fun with them and keeping training interesting through the pandemic. It's very clear that you women are so close. How important is that chemistry when you're at, you know, training for Olympic Games in general, but training for the Olympic Games in which you know, uh, th this process was just kind of unpredictable and unlike anything anyone has ever been through? It's definitely important. I think at this point, they are my second family and not a lot of countries have that dynamic. And uh, I think there's something extra to swimming a relay with people that you truly love and want to do your best for. And especially since, you know, training with them every single day for the past little bit, you've gotten to know each other so much and you've just gotten to this point where all you can do is just do your best. I know that you'll head off to the University of British Columbia. You'll swim for UBC and you go to school there. Yeah, you excited for, for you excited for that chapter to uh, to fly your wings out there in BC? Yeah, I'm so excited, but at the same time, I'm scared uh, to go to university. I, I'm I've been hearing a lot of stories from my friends of uni life and balance and swimming and school, and it's going to be a challenge, but I'm ready for it. Uh, do you think that it'll be any more challenging than swimming next to the Australians and the Americans at the Olympics? <laughs> Uh, definitely not as thrilling. It was a lot of fun to get up and race and get that silver medal ahead of the Americans in the four by one. But yeah, hopefully it'll be as exciting as that. Here's another question that you might be asked a lot, but I'm very curious. In the pool, are you able to see the lane next to you? Are you aware of how close the swimmer is next to you? Yeah, so uh, I, I usually look down, but at the points in realize where strategy is really important in terms of there is a wave when someone's swimming. So if someone's ahead of you and you want to kind of drag off of them, you go as close to the lane up as possible. And that's kind of pulling and making sure you know where you are. And uh, making if you're breathing towards the person you're racing, it is an advantage, but it won't make or end the race. And being the lead swimmer in a relay must be a lot of pressure as well. Is that something that mentally you, you train for? Is that is that a pressure that you want? Is that a pressure that you, you even feel? Uh, I think, yeah, I've talked about this with the other relay girls, but I definitely feel comfortable in that leadoff position. I think uh, when I was going third in that four by two, all you can do when you walk out and your friends are diving in and doing their part of the race, you're just sitting there like, oh my gosh, I have to do that now. <laughs> so I think when you lead off, it's kind of like, this is my own race. You can kind of keep that focus for that little second to when you get onto the blocks. But I, I loved every position to get a flying start and to start off relay and start good for them. And <laughs> I'm happy with how I did. I know that the two weeks prior to the Olympic Games and the two weeks after are completely different. Um, it's We're now open in Ontario. Restaurants and patios are open. How excited are you to hit some of your favorite spots in Scarborough and in Toronto? I'm so excited. I can't wait to see more people and to live normal life again. I'm happy everything's getting better. Well, congratulations, Kyla. You had a whole country cheering you on. I know that uh, that you, you. your family couldn't be there with you, but uh, the, the country is very proud of you. So congratulations. Taylor Ruck joins me now. Taylor, you're coming home with two more Olympic medals. This is your thing. You go to Olympic Games and you come home with pairs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a trend, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a very good trend. Well, congratulations on setting that trend. You set the bar in, in Rio in 2016. I know these are very different Olympic Games, and I'm sure you've been asked, compare the villages. So, Taylor, please compare the villages, what village life was like. Yeah, um, comparing the villages. <laughs> Um, honestly, the only things that I really noticed were the uh, plastic barriers in the meal hall. So it like kind of made it hard to talk to people, but like we kind of figured it out. I don't know. We just like all sat next to each other if we wanted to talk and uh, and then the masks, obviously. But apart from that, like you could see people from other countries as long as you had your mask on. And um, it was just cool seeing there was this uh, really tall Chinese basketball player. I think his name was Yao Ming that like Kyla was pointed out he's like he looked like he's eight feet tall so oh my gosh I was just like in awe 
Um, so just like seeing stuff like that is the same from Rio, just like seeing the really cool, like famous people. Yeah, and uh, Yao Ming is pretty famous. Yao Ming is one of one of the most famous basketball players of all time. That's pretty incredible. So there was a little bit of mingling, I guess, or at least you, you got to uh, see across paths um, with with some of the other with some of the other um, dignitaries and some of the other notables, which is pretty great. Also, is your chemistry with these women? I know it's something you speak about often, and you can see through the television screen here in Canada how close you are as a unit. How important was that in training for the Olympics in this incredible year? Yeah, I think it's totally important. Just like having that support um, and just knowing how much effort we put in every single day makes us like appreciate it that much more, the success that we come out of the Olympics with. Um, and I don't know, I'm definitely very, uh, I think I'm more of a relay centered swimmer. So the fact that that just like shows me what you need to know about like how I perform my best, you know? Um, so having that support and like, laughing on deck with the girls and even before the relay I think there's a picture of me and Kyle and we're just like laughing before she dives in and I'm like oh <laughs> I hope that's okay <laughs> distract but um yeah no I think it's totally essential to like helping me perform better and maybe them I'm not sure <laughs> No, it's totally okay. I know the country that the country loves seeing the personality and how much y you girls love each other and and your love for the pool. It's very it's very clear. Um, you also have uh, a you have a pretty incredible teammate in Canada, Penny Alexiak. You also have a pretty incredible teammate in Katie Ledecky at school. Um, uh, not there's not too many swimmers that uh, that get a, a pair of teammates like that to be able to uh, to learn things off of. Yeah, no, you raise a great point. It is. I'm super blessed to be able to be surrounded by such inspiring women. Um, the fact that they're both so decorated, it's it's really cool. Uh, just to kind of know that I have those girls at like, not my fingertips, you know, but like <laughs> to be able to race them in practice and know like they're the best in the world. So if I can just hang on or just kind of race them in practice, it kind of gives me confidence going on to that stage and racing them there. You don't have them at your fingertips, but what's, you know, what is the text cutoff date with Katie? Okay. Like what, what was the text cutoff date? Is it when you board the plane to Tokyo? Like what is the, okay, we're not talking until the Olympics are done. The text cutoff date, like where I don't talk to her? Yeah. Where, where you wouldn't oh. have, where you wouldn't have spoken to her, where you becomes now I'm Canadian, you're American. We're going no. to the Olympic games. Was it? No, that's no, no, that's a, I wouldn't say that's a thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Both, yeah. We saw each other in the dining hall. We just like gave each other big hugs. So yeah, no, I wouldn't say there's rivalry. Like it's chill. <laughs> were you were you able to train in Arizona for much of the pandemic or how soon did you come uh, up to Ontario and up to Canada to train? Yeah, so uh, our head coach Ben, he got us down here when I think it was like June and uh, lockdown kicked off around like what, March. So I was there for two and a half months. Um, so it was really nice just to like go back and there weren't really any pools open. So I just kind of was in like a backyard, uh, which I know a lot of uh, Canadians were too. Um, so yeah, not a lot of training, more just like weightlifting, running and like hiking, just like enjoying the nature aspect of Arizona. The nature aspect in Arizona is very nice. The heat is quite intense, but the nature aspect down there is very nice. Um, now that now that the Olympics are done and then you can be home, uh, are you going to go straight back home to Arizona? Or are you going to spend some time in, in Canada? Yeah, um, I'm just going to spend uh, till the weekend here just hanging out and getting that like closure celebrating with all the like Toronto people, you know, um, just kind of like, I don't know, we, some of us uh, left early, there was a couple of girls who had to leave, because um, after you perform, we were supposed to leave like the day after. Yeah. Um, but just kind of like acknowledging that with the girls who did leave early is I think it will be important. Um, and yeah, just seeing everybody and then for me personally, vacation after. So, and then Arizona. Well-deserved vacation. Uh, just to go back to leaving uh, in the comparison between the villages, what was it like to just finish your events? Okay. Pack up your bags and get out the door. That must've really rushed the feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think I was fortunate to not be too pushed on like time. Uh, we had the relay. I wasn't on the relay on the last day. Um, I was like the day before, I don't know. It was kind of weird because they had like prelims at night and then they had a final session and a final session. So um, I know a couple of the girls in the last final session. So that was a little more like 
um, a little more time, you know, uh, or less time from when they had to leave. But I had kind of like a nice time to just relax and cheer them on at uh, that by the last five of session. Um, so yeah, I think definitely for some people though, it was just pack up, get out. Uh, and like I was saying, I think it's important to like acknowledge those feelings and like that the Olympics really did just happen. Like you, you shouldn't be kicked out. I mean, not that you shouldn't be kicked out. Like <laughs> Sure, but, but it ha know. has to sink in. You have to, yeah. you have to process it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I, the entire country I know was very happy to uh, to watch you and your teammates in the pool, and congratulations on all your success. And w I look forward to seeing uh, what you get up to uh, in the next few years and in Paris, which is uh, three years away, which is pretty incredible. It is. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been such an amazing Olympic Games for Canadian women. Laurence Vincent Lapointe made history, paddling her way to her first ever Olympic podium in women's canoe sprint, winning silver in the C1 200 meter. Fellow Canadian Katie Vincent finished in eighth. Women have been competing in kayak events at the Olympics since London 1948, but this is the first time that canoe events were included. So pretty incredible to see a Canadian on the podium. This is the first time that Canada will play for a gold in soccer. It was supposed to be tonight. The gold medal game was supposed to be tonight, 10 p.m. for us, but after requests from the Canadian and Swedish federations, the IOC very wisely, moved the kickoff time, which was originally scheduled to kick off at 11 a.m. in Tokyo. You know, the heat's been a problem in Tokyo. I don't know if you heard. They say they wisely moved it to after sunset and moved it to Yokohama. So set the alarms. Christine Sinclair and Team Canada will play Sweden for gold at 8 a.m. Friday morning. Team USA won the bronze medal in women's soccer on Thursday. They beat Australia 4-3 in a thriller that saw Megan Rapino and Carly Lloyd each score a pair of goals. Check out the latest... On the star.com, it's Rosie DeMano, Dave Feshuk, and Bruce Arthur are over there continuing to file some goodness from Tokyo. It was a real win for me, a real win for us to score a couple of double medalists on today's show. Today's show. So thank you very much to Kyla Sanchez and Taylor Ruck. And thank you for listening. You can watch Tokyo Daily on the Toronto Stars YouTube page every day during these games. And thank you for downloading and subscribing to the podcast. Continue to do so, and I'll continue to talk to you. I'll talk to you tomorrow.